Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. The first thing you think about when you hear the word gold is something that has a lot of value in a very small space. The second thing you'll think about is how to secure that value if you are in possession of it. And that is certainly something that is on the minds of the victims of the largest gold heist of all time. And we're going to explore... We are going to explore that story indeed. If you enjoy uh, videos like this, this is going to be a part of a playlist. I encourage you to press that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. This is brought to us by J.M. Bullion. Very interesting stories of the greatest gold heists of all time. There are 15 of them. Gold's high concentration of wealth per ounce has made it the target of thieves and unscrupulous people throughout history. We're going to count down the biggest gold heist of all time. Starting with number 15, the inside job. In 2008, Katrina Fincham in the virtual World of Warcraft game does mundane tasks for others in exchange for real-world money. She would make up to $700 a day in cash by working extra hours to farm gold for other players online. Wow, that is a smart way to make money for sure. Once she saved up $75,000, she decided to buy real gold bullion. A definitely a very smart move on her part. After coming back from vacation with her boyfriend, she found the bullion to be gone. Her insurance company refused to pay out, and Katrina sued them. The insurance, comp the insurance company countersued, claiming it was an inside job, and she had used the gold to get the insurance claim. <clears throat> well, it turned out it was an inside job, but it was actually the boyfriend who she had met online who had tipped off thieves for a mere 500 bucks as to the gold's location. So uh, she was stupid for meeting somebody online who she didn't trust and informing him that she had all this gold. And he was stupid because he could have gotten away with a whole lot more money than the 500 bucks if he would have stolen the gold. Nonetheless... I shake your head at that one. Number 14, the Belize Squeeze. In 2012, on an October morning in Florida, a man carrying $2.6 million in gold flakes and suitcases was accosted by two other men. The men took the gold and ran. One of the suspects, Ryanel Valdez Valheredes, was evidently or eventually tracked down from GPS data on his ankle monitor when he received... Uh, which he received from previous criminal activity. Boy, go figure. Some of these criminals are not too bright. After being released on bail, Valdez fled and missed his next court hearing. Officially on the run, he was uh, eventually nabbed by Belizean authorities while trying to squeeze through bushes at the Guatemalan-Belize border. Number 13 is a locomotive swap. In 1855, Three companies shipped 91 kilograms of gold from England to France. The gold, estimated to be worth around $3.8 million at current prices, was heavily secured on a train because of a great spate of recent train robberies. The gold was put in a scheme of boxes that required two different keys held by different railway, railway employees and reinforced by iron bars. When the gold got to France, they opened the box for it to only have been replaced by lead. How did the criminals get into the box? Before it was shipped, they were able to use molten wax to forge new keys. Wow, a pretty clever scheme. Uh, one of those that I think would make for a great movie. Number 12, the Singapore score. In 2012, 70 gold bars worth $4.3 million went missing from Brink, Singapore, a company which provides secure transportation and logistics services. The thieves apparently did not get far. Within 12 hours, the, men, the man was apprehended at the airport trying to leave the country. Yes, indeed. Wow. <clears throat> Glad they caught him. Number 11 is the safe cracker down under. In 1955, Carrie Packer, an Australian media tycoon, held 285 kilograms of gold in his office 
along with a glass jar of gold nuggets and jewelry. Only one morning it wasn't there any longer. An expert safe cracker had broken in, or safe breaker had broken in, and, and over $11.9 million in loot was taken. None of the suspects checked out. The police found one fingerprint, but it turned out to be the safe mechanic that had serviced the safe in the past. The suspect was never tracked down, and it is rumored that the gold was melted down in nearby Melbourne. Number 10 is Summer Bliss. This is an interesting one. In Suriname and Guyana, mined gold is subject to taxes and royalty payments. As a result, much gold is smuggled out illegally. Common boats, such as fishing boats, are one way to do this. In 2012, a fishing boat named Summer Bliss was manned with an unarmed crew of four sailing near Curacao. Six men boarded the boat and convinced the crew that they were custom officers. They packed up 216 kilograms of gold estimated to be worth $11.5 million and made off with the loot. The smuggled boat never made it to the destination, and the intended recipient of the gold never came forward. Wow, <clears throat> very interesting. In the Great Depression swindle, swindle is number five, number nine rather. In the 1930s, it was regular for Imperial Airways to transport gold bullion around the world from the airport. But in 1935, with only one person on night duty, three men were able to walk away with over $19 million in gold from the airstrip. The gold was bound for Belgium and France. Despite five strong subjects involved, only one went to jail for theft, and the gold was never found. And then we have number eight, the curse of the Brinks Mat. In 1983, of Balaktavia wearing a gang of six broke into a Brinks Mat warehouse at London Heathrow. The gang had been tipped off that there was three million pounds in cash being held. Uh, but after dousing the guards, and that they they had the guards and they tied them up, and then they doused them in gasoline, threatening to light them on fire. Two of the senior guards provided keys. To their surprise, their information was incorrect. And there was, in fact, 76 boxes of gold bullion containing 6,800 bars of gold, among other treasures, with upwards of $40 million in loot they made off with. The aftermath that followed was not what they hoped for and has been compared to the curse of King Tut. Group members endured grave misfortunes after the heist. It is said that 20 people are to have died because of greed or anger. Makes you wonder if maybe there was some uh, vigilante justice that had occurred there. Nonetheless, this one would make for a great movie. <clears throat> and then we have number seven, Spain's looting of the New World. 16th century, the, con the conquering of the New World brought 154 tons of gold from the New Americas into the coffers of the Spanish. However, the amount of silver they extracted was even more substantial at 7,440 uh, 7, tons. Pretty amazing. By pillaging the New Americas, Spain became the world's reserve currency from the years 1530 to 1640. World's reserve currency. Yes, indeed, gold and silver are money. No matter how it's obtained, that's what it became. Very interesting indeed. Now, number six is a rare shortchanging in 2012, a judge ruled that 10 rare gold coins worth $80 million belonged to the U.S. government, not a family that had sued the U.S. Treasury, saying it had illegally seized them. The 1933 St. Gons Double Eagle coin was originally valued at $20, but sold for as much as $7.5 million at a Sotheby's auction in 2002. 1933, after President Theodore Roosevelt had the U.S. abandoned the gold standard. Most of the 445,500 double eagles the Philadelphia Mint had struck were melted into gold bars. However, a Philadelphia Mint cashier had managed to give or sell some of them to a local coin dealer, Israel, Israel Switt. In 2003, Switt's family, uh, Joan Langbord, and her two grandsons drilled open a safety deposit box that had belonged to him and found the 10 coins. 
When the land boards gave the coins to the Philadelphia Mint for authentication, the government seized them without compensating the family. And indeed, it was a complex story, and I hadn't talked about some of this on the channel in the past, but legally, I, I, they were technically the governments to begin with, but there is a debate about that. Stolen property originally from whoever the Mint employee was that gave it to uh, their father. Number five, the Sabanye Syndicate in Africa. In 2014, after six months' investigation, 18 miners were arrested at the Sabanye Gold Mine in Carletonville, South Africa. The men were believed responsible for more than $186 million of theft at the mine in the last year. The, th the theft allegedly occurred at the metallurgy plant, where the gold was separated from the ore. The miners used specially designed bags fitted inside of their overalls to steal the concentrated material, a sand-like substance containing significant amounts of gold. So pretty clever and uh, fascinating. Number four, uh, a moving back entrance. Moving, moving, making a back entrance is what that says. It's hard to read that font. In 1976, a group associated with the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PLO, looted the highly secured British Bank of the Middle East in Beirut for over $296 million in today's dollars worth of treasure. So they blasted a hole in the back of the bank through the wall of a Catholic church next to the bank. After two days, they snuck inside to loot the vaults, bringing back gold, jewels, stocks, and bonds, and they were never caught. That's pretty amazing. They were able to pull that off by a building next to uh, the, the structure there. And ISIS gets rich in 2014. The Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Shams has become the richest terror group ever after looting 500 billion Iraqi dinars, the equivalent of $429 million from Mosul's central bank, according to the regional governor. Actually, I had covered that story some time after. Uh, Nineveh Governor Atwey al Nachuji confirmed to Kurdish television reports that ISIS militants had stolen millions from numerous banks across Mosul. A large quantity of gold bullion is also believed to have been stolen. The bounty collected by the group has left it richer than other terror groups in Al-Qaeda as well, and as wealthy as small nations such as Tonga, uh, Kichubi, and the uh, Marshall Islands and the Falkland Islands. And they even minted their own, own gold coins, and I covered that on the channel as well, of their minting of their own coins. And then two, uh, World War Two, we saw, and I... I'm not glad, I don't want to say the word. In fact, I shouldn't have mentioned even the last story, but I'm going to try to be clever with my wording here about what happened in Germany in World War II. On foreign reserves due to increased militarization spending to get the necessary funds they needed, they looted gold from Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Danzig. During the war, they stepped up this up in a much larger scale, exporting $550 million in gold from foreign governments, including 223 from Belgium, and 193 million from the Netherlands. They also stole precious metals from concentration camps where all property was taken from victims, wedding rings, watches, teeth, jewelry, etc. One conservative estimate of the total looting is 1,038 tons worth over $43 billion today. Yes, indeed. The reason why I gotta be careful is because of uh, sensors on the YouTube. Number one, fascinating. China is one of the biggest producers and buyers of gold, but it was less than 100 years ago that they lost thousands of years worth of reserves. In 1937, Japan invaded China and helped themselves to 6,600 tons of gold from the capital of Nanking today, which translates to over 275, I guess, billion dollars. China wasn't alone in their, in their loss. And during World War II, Japan conquered much of the Pacific Islands and Eastern Asia, and they took swaths of gold from 13 Asian countries. So usually war, as you see in the previous stories here, are the biggest uh, culprits of these big gold heists. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Hope you found this video entertaining and interesting. And uh, I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch. 
and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>